boyfriend's ex? What? What? You guys really need to be on a steady hand this whole time shooting me? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Welcome back to reality, Rachel. Rachel's the mystery freelancer? <laughs> Surprise. Yeah. Be afraid, okay? Crazy's back. Don't ever be rushed to hug me at one time. I'm. <laughs> 22, 23, 24, 25. Um, and I actually wrote and directed a short film that was sort of inspired by that time in my life. It wasn't really based on incidents, but it was inspired by the time in your life where you realize that your soul, the cost of your soul is really only a paycheck and you've become like an evil, terrible monster. And so <laughs> that was the inspiration for me to sort of tell this story. It's like we sort of set out to make a female Breaking Bad set in reality TV. Like it really is about how bad you can become. And when women destroy other women, they destroy themselves. Like something that we talked about a lot was like, the way that we tear apart other women ends up ultimately impacting us. Right. And that, on the whole, that can be a very microscopic conversation about just yourself and your relationship to women. But on a cultural whole, it's really, really true that when we start tearing women apart like that in the media, inevitably you're gonna turn that lens upon yourself at some right. point and feel like dog shit. You know, when bad things go down, sometimes your kid brain computes it as like, um, I don't know, you must be unlovable. I am. Completely lovable. <laughs> Burn in hell, you witch! <laughs> I think, again, what we're doing is shining a, a pretty harsh, pretty cynical light on the fact that there's a real high in sort of eviscerating a prom queen on camera. It feels kind of good to take that bitch down. Mm -hmm. But that ultimately, um, at the end of the day, the price to all of us culturally is, is not worth bearing. It's entertaining, but at the same time, we absolutely had the agenda of um, talking about how damaging it is, not only to the people who make it, but to the people who watch it when you perpetuate these ideas sure. of, you know, what it is to be a man, what it is to be a woman, the sort of artificial romance, and the, we talked endlessly the first season about the princess fantasy. Right. So it gives people a false perception of what's true, this idea right. that you could fall in love when you are um, with, <laughs> what, 30 other girls mm -hmm. um, and having like three dates. Um, you know, again, that's this perpetuation that romance is this thing that you, you um, that isn't based on actual knowing each other or mutual respect. Right. It's based on all these superficial qualities. So it's sort of exploring what it takes to make reality TV and it's a look behind the scenes on reality TV in terms of the cost on the human heart, I would say. You can't use this footage. I'm sorry, what did you just say? You can't use the footage. I made a verbal agreement with her. You can't use it. Well, that's a little like the maid saying that she owns the silver because she polished it. You don't have the right to make an agreement like that. You know why? Because I own every inch of footage and every single camera on this show. You're day labor. You got it? There's a moment in the, in yeah. the pilot where my character is having oh, yeah. to decide whether or not to take down our, you know, our, our MILF character, uh, our older woman, and um, I'm hearing in my ear all of the information that our psychiatrist is feeding me to use against her to break her down. And I, I destroy her anyways, and as she walks away, I like wipe a tear away, because you, it is, it's really, the show is really a, a journey about the struggle for Rachel's soul. There's a shot in the pilot that we were really passionate about getting, which was we can't come in and Rachel's lying on the floor of a limo in a beat up, like dirty, like sweat stained, this is what a feminist looks like t-shirt. And she's surrounded by girls in evening gowns and they're all almost kicking her in the head and she just looks like she's gonna barf and she's like riding on the bottom of the limo and we come in to find out she's ducking cameras because she's down on the floor Got producing it. the girls from the floor. And for me, that image was about just hanging onto your idealism for way too long. Like you come out of college and you think you know exactly who you are and then you start collecting a paycheck and four years later, you're riding around on the bottom of a limo and you're beat up t-shirt from college just thinking you're a piece of shit. So that, that's, that's our me. show. That's our show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.